Let us get on our knees so we could have an open a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you for having us this Sabbath here, Lord. As we come and bend the knees, we ask you for forgiveness of, of our sins, Lord. That all our petitions, Lord, will be granted according to your will. As we come to you, Lord, we ask you for your Holy Spirit that you will give us wisdom and understanding, Lord. The Bible has said it, the spirit of prophecy has said it. We live in the latter rain, latter days, the end of the world, Lord. And at this time, Lord, we are being shaken. Uh, we ask you that we'll be, we won't be the ones who will be shaken out but the things that are happening inside and outside of the church, Lord. We ask you now for those who are suffering, Lord. They have lost family members, Lord. For our church members in Pasadena, that you will comfort them, Lord. And be with uh, those who are sick, those who are being uh, discouraged, Lord. That you will please bring healing to their hearts, Lord. That you will uh, touch their hearts and make them see that it's not time to play with the things of God, that they, they will wake up out of their sleep, Lord. We ask you now, Lord, that you please hide me bef behind your cross, Lord, and I, as I speak, Lord, that you will please uh, put words from on high. We ask you now that as we open the word of God, you will bless us with your Holy Spirit. As we go thr through and, f and fro, we ask you that you will give us your understanding, your knowledge, Lord, and your wisdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask you, amen. You'll be receiving a... You'll be receiving a, a pamphlet or... Will be our what we'll be reading today, and if we go to our scripture reading for that was brother read today, Colossians two. Colossians 2, 5, I mean 6 through 8. As we, as we read this and then uh, as we go through our, our study, we'll see why this verse is. Amen? It says The Bible says, Colossians 2, 6 says, As ye therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built in him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. And then the Bible says in A, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men and after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. That's a pretty strong warning. Amen. Let us go to uh, first. First Timothy four. First Timothy four. One. The Bible says, "Now the Spirit speaker expressly, that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to the deducing spirits." and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a, with, 
with a hot iron. The Bible is uh, warning us, amen? It's telling us that in this time, not in other times, but in this time, this is the latter, it says, especially in the latter times, we are living in the latter times, and this is going to start happening, and it's been happening. Things that we, at the beginning of this movement, uh, false doctrine, we are seeing it rise again in our own church. We will have our study. We're going to start reading from, from our page. Amen? The, the Spirit of Prophecy says, There is an earnest work of preparation to be done by Seventh-day Adventists. If they will stand firm in their trying experience just before them, says, if they remain true to God in the confusion of temptation of the last days, they must seek the Lord, how? In pride? In prideful? In humility of heart for wisdom to, receive, to resist the temptation of the enemy. Ever are we to keep the mind of the solemn thought of the Lord's soon return. And it be of this recognizing the individual work to be done. Through the aid of the Holy Spirit, we are to resist natural inclinations and tendency to wrong. And without of the life ever on Christ-like element. Thus, we should prepare our hearts for the reception of God's blessing which will impart to us grace and bring us into harmony with the faith of Jesus. For this work of preparation, great advantages have granted to these people in life bestowed in messages of warning and instruction sent through the agency of the Spirit of God. Because of the increasing power of Satan's temptation, the times in which we live are full of peril, peril for the children of God. We need to learn constantly of the great teacher that we may take every step in surety and righteousness. Wonderful scenes are opening before us. And at this time, a living testimony is to be born in the lives of God's professing people. So that the world might see that in this age, when evil reigns on every side, there is a yet a people who are laying aside their will and seeking to do God's will. As a people whose heart and lives and lives, the law of God is written, there are strong temptations before us. Sharp test. The commandment keeping people of God are to prepare for this time of trial by obtaining a deeper experience, experience in the things of God and practical knowledge of the righteousness of Christ. Not to unbelievers only, but to church members. The words are spoken. Seek ye the Lord while ye may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Isaiah 55, 6. Let your daily lives witness to the faith you profess. I was talking to my mom yesterday, and we were talking about how people is, their people in the world, are get their hearts, even church members that have fallen away, their hearts have become so hard. And in this time, we have to seek God how? Pridefully and humility. There, it takes humbleness to what? To come into the knees and, and, and bow down and what? In front of God, right? Humility. Today, God is telling us, seek me, but seek me how? Humbly. In humility. We have to come and bow down to God. Because this is the time, if we become prideful, the devil is going to what? Confuse us. 
Ellen G. White is talking about not only the things how we see it, right? Uh, we're talking with our family yesterday, how we are being tempted of the things of the world, right? We right away we know, you know, that dancing and worldly music and, you know, things of the world are not God's. But as we enter into this end time, in these days, Ellen G. White is saying that we need to be prepared and we have to take a what? A work of preparation for these last days. Why? Because the enemy is going to be more busy where? In the world? Yes. But in the church. He's going to be more busy in the church trying to bring what? Confusion. We just read it in First uh, Timothy 4, 1. That there's a what? There's a, in the latter thing, some depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devil. The, the demons are coming in this world and putting what? Words in people's mouths and even in doctrines and Bible studies. Let's keep on reading. Look what it, the Bible saying and uh, spirit prophecy is saying right here. Perilous times are before us. Everyone who has a knowledge of the truth should awake and place himself body, soul, and spirit under the discipline of who? Of God. The enemy is on our what? On our track. We must be wide awake on our guard against who? Against him, the devil, right? We must put on the whole armor of God we must follow the directions given through the spirit of what? Listen what she says right now. Fear of prophecy. We must love and what? And obey the truth. Does it say we must know the truth only? No. We must love and obey the truth for this time. This will save us from accepting what? A strong delusions. You guys get it? If we, she said, we must follow the directions given through those spirit prophecy. And we're going to start reading what she said. What's going to happen in this time. And the Bible is saying it too. God has spoken to us through his word. He has spoken to us through the present duty. The position that we should now occupy. The warnings that have been given. Line upon line. Present upon pres, a pres, a present. We shall be heeded. If we discard them, what excuse we offer? She's giving us the what? The ammunition that what we need to do in this time, right? We should go to the Bible and what? Line upon line, precept upon precept. But she said, we should give what? We should follow the directions of the spirit of prophecy. Spirit prophecy. This is the time that we should be reading these books. If you don't have those books, I counsel you to read them and buy them. You know, because this is the time that we, the things that are happening in this earth, she's going to start, she's telling us, because it wasn't not her saying it, but it was God through the Holy Spirit saying it to her. We should be reading these books. And she said, if we do this, and if we love and obey the truth, this will save us from accepting strong delusion. So what we should be reading? A spirit prophecy? We should be reading our Bible every day, right? But we should have our what? A Bible book reading of the spirit prophecy every day. Listen to what she keeps on saying. I beseech to those who are laboring for God, not to accept what? The spurious for the genuine. Let no man reason it to be placed where sanctifying truth should be. Christ is waiting to, ki to what? kindle faith and love in the hearts of his people. Let not erroneous theories receive contentions from the people who are to be what? Standing firm on the platform of eternal truth. 
God called upon us to hold firmly the fundamental principle that are based upon what? Unquestionable authority, which is the Bible. Amen? Those who seek to remove the old marks are not holding fast. They are not remembering how they have received and what? And hurt. Anybody could come. See, she, this is happening now. If you don't see it, brothers, wake up. This is happening now, even in our lines. Those who seek to remove the old marks are not holding it what? They're not holding it fast. They are not remembering what? How, to, how did they have received it and hurt? Those who try to bring theories that will remove the pillars of our faith concerning what? The sanctuary concerning the personality of God and, or of Christ. When you read this, it's like she's seeing our, our present. I don't know if you, if you could tell, but we could see this, that this is the very thing that Satan is attacking now. He's attacking the personality of God, and he's attacking the personality of Christ. And he's attacking the what? The sanctuary message. The sa the <laughs> Once we get there, I'm going to read what Haskell's saying. What's she looking at the future? Through the eye of what? Of Christ, right? Or the Holy Spirit was showing her these things that was going to happen. Are working as what? Are working as blind men. They are seeking to bring uncertainties that to set up the people got adrift without a what? Anchor. Who's our anchor? Jesus Christ. And his what? And his truth. Yesterday one brother was saying, is the na name of Jesus uh, you know, enough for authority? And then he says, or is the scriptures for authority. And then he gave me a he gave me a scripture where it says that even God put the word of God above himself. You get it? That's the authority that we we should always read. The Bible. Amen. That's our anchor. When we have an anchor, who? Jesus Christ. He had left us this. So we won't what? So we won't fall. In the future, she says, in the future deception of every kind is to what arise and we want a solid ground for our feet we want a solid pillar for our building not one pin is to be what removed from that which is the lord has established the enemy will bring false theories such as what the doctrine that there is no what sanctuary or the attacking of the sanctuary message. There is not one of us. There, there, this is one of the points on which there will be a departing from the faith. Wow. She was looking at the future, right? She said, in the future. For in the future for her was what? Our time. This is not in the future, but this is our time. Where shall we find safety unless be in the what? In the truth that the Lord has given us for the last 50 years. She always, when you just go to Ellen G. White and put 50 years, and you will see all these quotes. She always, she always refers that the last 50 years, that's how God was bringing his people, and he was building what? His church. For more than a half a century, there's different points of present truth have been questioned and opposed. New theories have been advanced as true, which were not true. And the Spirit of God revealed their error. As the great pillar of faith have been presented, the Holy Spirit has borne witness to them. And especially, this is so regarding the truth of the sanctuary question. 
Over and over again, the Holy Spirit has in a remark, a, in a marked manner, endorsed the preaching of this doctrine. But today, as in the past, some will be led form new theories to deny the truth about, upon which the Spirit of God has placed his approval. Any man who seeks to present from the light that has come to us an administration in the heavenly sanctuary should not be accepted as a teacher. Amen? We should be aware, brothers. See, this is the thing. Sometimes we take light, the message of the sanctuary, but it's not light, brothers and sisters. It's strong. You know, I was like, what should I preach? But they already know the message of the sanctuary. No, brother, sometimes we think. We're talking with pastor last week. He says, we think we know this message, but sometimes we cannot explain the 2300 days prophecy. We should go back and re-study it. Because the devil is trying to confuse us now in this, bringing new theories, what, what she's saying, and confusing our what? Our fellow man. Let's keep on reading. So, if these topics, if these messages are so important, should we give heed to it? Should we re-study it? We'll see what she says. Let the truths that are foundation of our faith be kept before the people. Some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctors of the devil. She's quoting what uh, Timothy is saying. They talk of science, and the enemy comes and gives them what? An abundance of science. But in not the science of salvation. It is not the science of humility. Remember that? It takes humility to study these uh, subjects and to come what? Not with your knowledge, but his knowledge. You get it? With his knowledge, not our knowledge. Because sometimes our knowledge, we think, is above God. Remember, God put his word about what? About him. So we need to trust the word of God. Amen? Humility and what? Of consecration and of sanctification of the spirit. We are not to understand what the pillars of our faith are. We need to know them. The truths that we, and, and what did she say? Not only know them, right? She, need, she said we need to love and what? And obey these truths. We need to know. And understand what the pillars of our faith are. The truths that have made us a people that what we are. Leading us on step by step. We are not to receive the words of those who come with a message that contradicts a special points of our faith. They gather together a mass of scriptures. A pile of us proof around their certain theories. This has been done over and over again. During the what? Past 50 years. And while the scriptures are God's word and are to be respected, the application of them is such application moves one pillar from the foundation of that God has sustained these 50 years is a great mistake. What are these 50 years? Since starting in 1840, right? Remember? God started laying the foundation of his church. Amen? Through the charts of 1843 and 1850. Amen? He gave us his foundation and he gave us his pillars. <clears throat> he who makes such an application knows not the wonderful demonstration of the Holy Spirit that gave power and forth to the past messages that have come to the people of God. You get it? I was I was reading, and she said, there was a great movement, and, the, and the, the movement of the Holy Spirit came in 1840 to 1844. The Holy Spirit moved, and God showed that 
his people have the power and have the right interpretation of the what? Of the prophecy. God gave them that. God gave them this light. Amen? Let's keep on uh, reading. So it was a force. Is it what? The Holy Spirit gave the power and force that the, this past messages have come to the people of God. Many who embrace the third message have not had experience with the two former messages. Satan understood this and his evil eye was upon them to throw him down. But the third angel was pointing them to the most holy place and those who had an experience in the past messages were pointing them the way to the heavenly what? Sanctuary. Many saw that the perfect chain of truth in the an angel's message. Which angel's message? The three angels' message. Revelation 14. And gladly received them in order and followed Jesus by faith in the heavenly sanctuary. These messages were represented to me as an anchor to the people of God. Imagine we start removing these things. What's going to happen to us? We're not going to have an anchor, right? Those who understand and receive them will be kept from what? Being swept, swept away by the many delusions of Satan. So as soon as the, the great disappointment happened in 1844, and they went to re-study, what had happened? Why did Jesus didn't come to this earth? Satan started moving, she said, and started putting what? Doubt and false doctrine. But God started clearing up their minds, and we're going to start reading that. Let's read the last quote from here. As people of God, we should be what? Just any student? Earnest. Students of what? A prophecy. We should not rest until what? In regard to the subject of the what? We should be what? Intelligent. So we won't be shaken up. Brothers and sisters, this is the time when the devil is putting to practice all his forces. Remember, he's in our what? He's in our track, he says. She said. And he's about to, if we don't get earn, become earnest students of prophecy, if we don't rest until we become intelligent in regard to what? To the subject of the sanctuary, which is brought out in the visions of Daniel and John, this subject sheds great light on our present position and work and give us unmistakable proof that God has led us in our past experience. It explains our disappointments in 1844, showing us that the sanctuary to be cleansed was not the earth. As we had supposed, but Christ then entered into the most holy apartment of the heavenly sanctuary and is there performing the closing work of his priestly office in the fulfillment of the works of the angel to the prophet Daniel and to 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be clean. We should become intelligent, she said, right? In the subject of what? Of the sanctuary. Who has read this book? If you haven't read this book or you have read it, some of it, I urge you to, to read it. And we read it again. Because what she's saying is that we need to be intelligent. And one of our pioneers, really intelligent in this subject, is Hasko. Listen to what she says. Listen to what he says. He says, this sanctuary was a shadow or model of the heavenly sanctuary. He's talking about the earthly. And the serpent was to be planned by the Lord that all the work was a type of representation of the work of the Son of God will do on the earth and in heaven for the redemption of the last race. 
It was the most wonderful object of what? Lesson ever given to mankind. What? The sanctuary message, brother. This is what this, that's what he says in the back. The sanctuary service was the most wonderful object lesson ever given to what? Mankind. Imagine if that was the most ob wonderful object lesson ever given to mankind. Should we be what? Intelligent, she says. We need to be intelligent in this what? Subjects. Amen? Listen what she says. What he says right here, um, let me see. I like how he puts it. He describes it so plain that even, you know, even little kids could understand this. She, this is what Haskell saying. The early sanctuary with its types and symbols is like a powerful lens of the telescopes. Who has gone to the Griffith Park and watched the telescopes? They're huge, right? Well, the sanctuary and its type and symbols is like a powerful lens of the telescope, which is makes it simple to view heavenly bodies that are otherwise will be what? Invisible to the eyes of the ignorant. Those wonderful lens appear like ordinary glass. But to the astronomer who longs to know of the wonders of the heaven is filled with the rapture of the gaze through them. In like manner. The Christian, should, Christian who will study the, type, the typical service of the early sanctuary, not as a, not as a collection of, of dry, lifeless relics of ancient wor worship, but as a wonderful art gallery whereby the hands of the master artist, the different parts of the marvelous plan of redemption are portrayed, will be astonished at the beauty revealed. These figures fairly speak to him as he were from the canvas. They tell the beautiful story of the Savior, of the Savior's love until his very soul is filled with the rapture as the gaze upon them. How beautiful. So I was I was telling our class last week that when we were studying the subject of the sanctuary that we have that's what she says she, God has given us this gift of what? of prophecy as we understand the Bible we're able to see that this message of the sanctuary more than any other I say humbly more than any other religion in this world we are able to grab the Bible and see what God is doing in heaven. What is God doing in the sanctuary? Did you guys know? If you guys want to, uh, I'll be reading from Great Controversy in the Holiest of Holiest. Let me read from God's um, Law Immutable. Let us go to Revelation 11.19. Revelation 11, 19. Who knows? I don't know if you know, but I didn't know. When I read this and the great controversy, I was, uh, I was amazed and astonished because she, she says it wasn't until 1844 that the world didn't know about there was a heavenly sanctuary. You guys didn't know that? She says that right here. I'll read it right now, but let us read 11:19. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen what? In his temple, the ark of his testament. And there were what? Lightnings and voices and thunderings and earthquake and great hail. This is what she says about this. The ark of God's testament is the holy of holiest. The second apartment of the sanctuary. In the ministration of the early tabernacle, which served and to example the shadow of heavenly things, this apartment was opened only upon what? The great day of atonement for the cleansing of the sanctuary. <clears throat> therefore, listen to this. Therefore, the announcement that the temple of God was opened in heaven, 
Revelation 11:19 points to the opening of the what? The most holy place in heavenly sanctuary in 1844. So, uh, the beginning of uh, God's immutable and uh, great controversy, page 433. So, what's the disappointing with the purpose? I don't know if you ever, ever uh, uh, think about it. Well, did the disappointment have a purpose? We don't have the charge, but what's the disappointment with the purpose? Remember, it says 1843 there? But and then it, uh, they, be, they came to the 1844, October 22. What's it with the purpose? To what? God had what? He said what? He covered a mistake, right? So they found this. But the great disappointment too came to what? Because so we will understand that there was a heavenly what? Sanctuary. Should we study that sanctuary in according to the early sanctuary? Amen? Sh should we just be any type of students of the sanctuary? No. Ernest says, and we should be intelligent in this subject. The subject of the sanctuary was the was the key which unlocked the mystery of 1844. It opened to view a complete system of truth connected with harmonious, showing that God's hand had directed what? The great Advent movement. Amen? Both the prophecy of Daniel 8.14. We know some, some of them that have not read it, but that's when it says unto 203, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. The first angel's message, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, pointed to Christ's ministry where? In this earth? Not in the most holy place, to the investigating judgment, and not to the coming of Christ for the redemption of his people and the destruction of the wicked. The mistake had not been the reckoning of the prophetic period, but in the event to take place at the end of the two, 2300 days. Were they wrong in the prophetic periods? No. They were wrong in the what? In the event. Was Jesus going to come into this earth in 1844? No. Where did he came? He came to the most holy place, right? Let me keep on reading. Christ has come not to the earth as they expected, but as foreshadowed in the type to the most holy place of the temple of God in heaven. In heaven. He is represented by the prophet Daniel as coming at what? At this time as the aging of days. Let us go to Daniel 7.13. For... For the sake of those who are watching us or those who might not know. Amen? Because I believe a lot of us right here know this by memory, I believe. Amen? Daniel what? 7.13. <coughs> we should be intelligent in this, brothers. But with the what? With the humble heart. I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like a what? The Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. This coming is foretold also on the prophet uh, Malachi. Let us go to Malachi 3. Where was Jesus coming? To the earth? In 1844, he was coming to where? To his father, right? The Asian of days. Okay, Malachi 3.1. Behold, the Bible says, I will send him my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord, whom ye seek, should suddenly come to what? His temple. What temple is the Bible talking about? The early? 
the heavenly, right? Even the messenger of the covenant, whom he, ye delight and behold, should come, said the Lord of hosts. The coming of the Lord to his temple was sudden and unexpected to his people. They were not looking for him there. They expected to come to where? To the earth, right? Brothers and sisters, these, these truths, we should restudy them again. And we, as, as a people of God, we should be together and studying this again. Amen? Because there's so much theories and false what? Doctrines now in our day that are coming into the people of God that we should be prepared to what? To be ready with that, say the Lord. But the people of God were not ready to meet their Lord. There was still work of preparation to be accomplished for them. Light was given by directing their minds to the temple of God in heaven. And as they should be by faith, follow their high priest in the ministration there, new duties will be revealed. Another message of warning is instructed was to be given to the church. Let us go to, uh, we're in Malachi. Don't move from Malachi. Let us go to Malachi 2 and 3. Malachi 3, 2 and 3. Malachi 3, 2 and 3. We are studying what they came to right after the what? The great disappointment. God showed them this. Why, why did, didn't Jesus come in 1844? Number two says, Amen. Says, but who may abide in the day of his coming? And who shall stand when appear, when he appear? For he is like a what? Refining fire, like fuller soap. What is he talking about right here? In 1844, was the people of God ready? No. Was the judgment passed? No. So God had to be right. Come to his temple to start doing this, right? Let us keep on reading three. And he should sit as a refiner and purified of what? Server. Silver, and he should purify who? The son of Levi. And purge them as a what? Gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord. An offering of what? A righteousness. From 1844 and on. Since 1840, God was preparing his people, his church, to give this message to the world. To get a people what? Be ready. So we could prepare the what? The way of what? Before me, the Bible says. So th there will be a people in this earth from 1844 to the end of the world that will what? Give this message and prepare a people with the message that the refiner could take your what? All your sins away. That's why he prepared this church to give this message to the whole world. And that message comes to what? Packed it in, in Revelation 14, what? 6 to, 12, 6 to 12. That's the message of Revelation 14, 6 to 12. Listen to what she says. While the investigative judgment is going forward in heaven, while the sins of penitent believers are being removed from the sanctuary, there is to be a special work of what? Purification, putting away sin among God's people upon earth. This work is more clearly presented in the messages of Revelation 14, 6 to 12. Amen? When this work should have been accomplished, the followers of Christ will be ready for his appearing. Let us go to, uh, we're Malachi 3. Let us read Malachi 3, 4. When this work should have been accomplished, the follower of Christ will be ready for his appearing. Look what, what Malachi 3, 4 says. 
Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, and as in the days of the old, as in the former days. Then God do what? Accept our what? Our offering. Because our offerings will be what? In righteousness. Amen? What was, she, what was she saying before? It's a time for purification and putting away sin. God is going to have a group of people that is preparing for the end time. And not only that, but they're putting away sin. They're purifying our, their soul with the blood of Jesus. Amen? They have washed their what? Clothes in the blood of what? Of Christ. Amen? Then the church, which our Lord, which our Lord at the, his coming is to receive himself, will be. Ephesians 5.27. Let us read what Ephesians 5.27 says. And don't move uh, Mal Malachi because we're going back to Malachi. She said, the Bible says, 6, 527. That he might present it to him a glorious church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it will should be holy and we what? Without a blemish. In 1844, was his church ready? No. She says, suddenly, even, uh, even Malachi is saying that suddenly he came to what? To his temple. The people of God were not ready. So the refiner had to what? Purify his people. He had to prepare a group of people to go to what? To go to heaven. Amen? Amen. Let us go to uh, Songs of Solomon Sons of Solomon 6.10. Who is she that look forward as the morning and fair as the noon, clear as the sun and terrible as an army with banners? Who is she? This church that God is preparing for the last day. Amen? Will be what? Fair as the morning. Fair as the moon. Clear as the sun. Amen? Besides the coming of the Lord to his temple, Malachi also foretells his second advent. He's coming to execute the judgment of this world. Let us go to Malachi 3, 5, and we'll be closing. Malachi 3 5. And I will come near to you, to you, to judgment. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against the false wearers, and against those who oppress the hardly and his wages, the widow, and the fatherless, and the turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me. Says the Lord of hosts. The, saying the Lord of hosts. Jude refers the same scene when he says, Behold the Lord coming with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all, to convince of all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds. This coming and the coming of the Lord to his temple 
are distinct and separate events. Amen? When in 1844, remember, was the prophecy of the prophetic periods right? They were right. What happened? The event was not right. The event, it wasn't that Jesus was coming to this earth, but Jesus was coming to his father. And in these last days, God is preparing, like Malachi 3, 1 to 5 says, you know, God is preparing a group of people to be what? To be saved. Not only that, he's refining them because he needs to take them to where? To heaven. Amen? Should we know this message by what? By memory. Amen? Should we be what? Intelligent and earnest students of the word of God, especially on the sanctuary message. When the devil comes with the what? With the flood gate. With, when he comes with this flood of false theories, we will be able to stand against his what? Errors. Amen? But may the Lord help us to be prayerful and humble, she said, to love what? And to obey this truth. Amen? When you love somebody, you give everything for them, right? When you love Jesus, you give everything for him. Didn't he give everything for you? And not only love, but obey. Amen? Not only know these truths, but love them and what? And obey them. And there's so much light that comes through the sanctuary. When we read, that's why she says, this special message come in the what? Of the book of Daniel and Revelation. When we read the prophecy, we see that this prophecy comes out, out of where? Out of his temple. Just read. Which when it starts in, in Revelation 8, it says out of the temple it came out. What temple? The early temple? No, the sanctuary. The sanctuary temple. The one in heaven. The heavenly sanctuary. May God help us to study. And not only to study, but to Love and obey this truth. Amen. May God bless you. Amen.